So this is the third video of our 10 video series. In this one, we're going to talk about the basics of the mathematics section. Uh, so in the next video, we're actually going to do some practice problems. In this video, we're just going to talk about the section itself, what to expect, what's on it, uh, and how to approach it. And then the section, and then the video after, video number four, we're going to go over some more specific strategies. So before we talk more generally about the section, let's look at the instructions, because the instructions of the math sections are always going to be the same. So let's go ahead and read them now uh, so that we never have to read them again. Um, let's see. Directions. For this section, solve each problem and decide which is the best of the choices given. Notice they say best. Fill in the corresponding circle on the answer sheet. You may use any available space for scratch work. Okay, so let's see what they say with the notes. First, the use of a calculator is permitted. So obviously graphing calculator is the best, but you can use the kind of regular scientific calculator, uh, but graphing calculator is what we want. All numbers used are real numbers, okay, uh, so we're not going to get any, any unreal numbers here, essentially. Uh, three, figures that accompany, uh, so basically no imaginary, I should say, no imaginary numbers. Uh, figures that accompany problems in this test are intended to provide information useful in solving the problems. They are drawn as accurately as possible, except when it is stated in a specific problem that the figure is not drawn to scale. So we're going to talk about this a little bit later. Basically, when you see the phrase not drawn to scale underneath some sort of geometric figure, be very skeptical about that picture. And we'll look at some specific examples in uh, the next video. All figures lie in a plane unless otherwise indicated. Unless otherwise specified, the domain of any function f is assumed to be the set of all real numbers x for which f of x is a real number. Okay, not very useful, but good to know. Finally, the most important thing about this section is here. It's the reference information. Now, these are pretty much 90% of the formulas you need to do this test properly. You'll see that they're mostly geometry formulas, so mostly you know, area and circumference of a circle, area of uh, these polygons, uh, special right triangles, Pythagorean theorem, and some information about angles here. So this is a very important uh, thing to look at because you're going to use this a lot on the test, especially if you forget uh, the formula. So you don't have to memorize these because they'll be here for you. So that is basically the uh, uh, directions for the exam. They're going to be the same for every section, uh, for every math section. So once you read it once, you're good. The only difference is going to be with the grid ends, but we'll see some more. We'll see an example of that later, uh, probably on number section four when we talk about the grid ends, or video four when we talk about the grid ends. Okay, so let's go ahead and break down uh, the sections here. There are generally three sections, as we said in the, the first video. However, uh, sometimes you're going to have more than three sections. You'll have four. That's because one of them is the experimental. But for the most part, you're going to have three every time. The first is a 25-minute, 20 20-question 20 section. And those are all multiple choice. Then you have a 25-minute, 18-question section. And there you have eight multiple choice and 10 grid ends where you have to kind of put in your own answer. There's no multiple choice. You have to grid in your own, your own uh, response. Finally, there's a 20-minute, 16-question section, and that's all multiple choice. So that's the basic breakdown of the section. Um, the key thing I want to tell you about the, the math section here is what's called order of difficulty. So that, in simple terms, means the questions get harder, or they are perceived to get harder, uh, as the numbers increase. So for instance, if we're talking about the 1 to 20 section, you know, we can pretty much break this down into 1 to 7 are considered to be easy, 8 to maybe 14 or 13 are considered to be medium on average, and um, 14 to 20 are considered to be hard, approximately, maybe 15 to 20. But anyway, you get the point, right? So a third, a third, a third. Now, when I say, for instance, number one is easy, if I say that in any future videos, I don't mean it's easy, why can't you do it, you dummy. What I mean is it's easy because this is what most students would think it would be, or that is, this is what ETS or College Board thinks it's going to be. Um, how do they figure out whether it's easy, medium, or hard? Well, it's all about the experimental section. This is where the experimental section comes in. Uh, they use test questions to figure out, okay, which one is easy, which one's meaning, which one's hard. Who gets what questions wrong? If a lot of people get a question wrong, they call it hard. If a lot of people get it right, they call it easy, and anywhere in between that. So that is the key here, and where this is going to matter is going to be in pacing. Uh, I'm going to talk much more about pacing in video four in terms of the specifics, how many questions to do in each section, how many to omit. But for now, I just want to mention that 
uh, getting a good score in the math section is not like high school where you have to try to answer every single question. Let's say, for instance, you were shooting for the average, 500. There are a total, oops, sorry, wrong one, 500. There are a total of, if you look, 49 questions in the math section. You only have to get 24. That's less than half. Less, or less than half of the questions to get a 500. Okay, so that means really, as we'll talk about later, do you really have to spend your time working on a lot of these hard questions if the easies and mediums alone can get you above that 500? If you got most of the easies and mediums right, you're looking at around a 600. So we really don't want to spend a lot of time on these hard questions until we master these easies and mediums. That's going to be what I mean by pacing. And you can see it here in the chart in terms of how they score it. If you want a 600, on the other hand, you only have to get 35 questions right. So that means you can miss uh, 14 questions of the total sections. Uh, well, so we'll talk much more uh, about uh, pacing in uh, video number four. But for now, just know that trying to complete the entire test for most for most students is going to be not the st good strategy to do because you'll be spending way too much time on hard questions and not enough on the easies and mediums. But we'll talk about that more in the next video. Okay, and then finally, well, what's tested on the test? Well, actually, interestingly enough, uh, what's tested is not going to be kind of the hard math you may be used to. It's actually generally 7th, 8th, and ninth grade math in general, though there are some is a little kind of 10th grade or a little advanced math there, but mostly it's this. Uh, as for the actual subjects, you've got your algebra, you've got geometry, which includes uh, mostly kind of area, coordinate geometry, basic stuff like that. There's no trig. There's no proofs. If you're used to doing geometric proofs, there's none of that. Really a lot of the advanced stuff you may have done in, a, in an actual geometry class, say in 10th grade, um, is not going to be on the exam. And most of the geometries actually that you have to know is in the uh, reference table that, that we looked at before. You've got a little bit of Algebra 2, just a touch, uh, with a few concepts there, like functions and such. You've got a little bit of probability and stat, probability and statistics, so like you know mean, median, mode, all that kind of junk. Uh, you've got some basic definitions, so like what an integer is, uh, what even an odd means. You've got graphs and charts, which really isn't a math topic, but um, you'll see what I mean when we look at some practice problems. Uh, we've got fractions, decimals, and percents, and ratios, sequences, and etc. I guess we can call it. Uh, just some random things you might not expect. So this is basically it. So in terms of the content, kind of what I mentioned in one of the early videos, it's not about content necessarily, as we're going to see. What I like to say about the math is that it's mostly a test of reading rather than a test of math, which is kind of weird. You wouldn't think that. But it's all about how well you read the questions and then how well you translate that into the math skills that you know. Um, so uh, we're going to move on to the next video where we're actually going to some specific examples. For now, if you like this video, please rate, comment, and subscribe. And uh, check out my website if you'd like to find out more information on the SAT and on many other different uh, topics related to schooling and education and all that stuff. All right, see you in the next video.